BYU Cougar basketball is back in action. So wide open, Barcelo. Again! AB for three! Let's get you ready to root on the boys in blue. This is Cougar Pregame Live on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Cougar Pregame Live is brought to you by Mountain America Credit Union. Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. Also brought to you by Quick Quack Car Wash. Fast, clean, loved everywhere. Here's your host, Landon Southwick. Good evening, BYU basketball fans. Welcome into Cougar Pregame Live, presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. Tonight, the Cougars are in Ogden to face the Weber State Wildcats. BYU is coming off an 83-71 loss to Creighton in South Dakota on a neutral floor. At the Pentagon, the the Cougars trailed by 18 at the half and were unable to dig out of the hole as they were able to cut the lead to 10 at one point in the game, but the Blue Jays closed the game out on the free throw line for the victory over the 24th ranked Cougars. Tonight, the Cougars take on the 9-2 Wildcats led by head coach Randy Ray, who is in his 16th season in Ogden. BYU is 33-11 and 11 all-time against the Wildcats in the series that began in the 1970s in 1973. In Provo, the Cougars are 10-11 and 11 on the road against Weber State, which is kind of interesting to note. Much different than their 21-0 and 0 record at the Marriott Center, so something we'll have to keep an eye on tonight. The Cougars have not fared particularly well at the D Event Center, and tonight we'll see if they can flip the script. Third-year head coach Mark Pope is 5-1 and one all time against the Wildcats, including four straight wins dating back to his time at Utah Valley University. Also of note, the team has never lost back-to-back games under Coach Pope and are 13-0 and when coming off a loss. And so that's proving to maybe be a little important tough week for the Cougars as they did have finals week and did not play midweek and we'll talk about that a little bit with Mark here in our conversation with him coming up shortly the Cougars have made double digit three pointers in consecutive games for the first time this season including a season high 12 on Saturday in Sioux Falls South Dakota over the past two games BYU is shooting 23 of 47 from beyond the arc and Trayvon, Trayvon ha- has had a huge part of that uptick in three-pointers as the junior was able to hit a total of five three-pointers since being inserted a- into the starting lineup against Missouri State in the victory there. He's all hit, also hit multiple triples in back-to-back games, the second longest streak in his career. This will be the fourth of five games against in-state teams. The Cougars have taken care of Utah, have taken care of Utah State's while falling in a tough game to UVU. Tonight will be another battle and a challenge against a quality opponent who is 9-2 on the season. The Wildcats started out the season 8-0 and for their best start in 36 years. And this Wildcat team is one that you cannot look past. One that's very capable of winning basketball games and's had a pretty good start this season. Not not. Not huge names on their schedule, but a win against Portland State's, a win against Northern Arizona, and a loss. There are only two losses coming to Utah State's and Washington State. The loss against Washington State was their first on the 8th of the month. It was a 94-60 loss, and then got beat by 15 a few nights ago against Utah State's and are looking to try to rebound. And that rebound is going to come from Colby McEwen. He led the Wildcats with 26 points on Wednesday night in that loss to Utah State, his second highest total as a Wildcats. He was 8 for 16 from the field, knocking down four three-pointers. And on the season, the Toronto native has led the Wildcats in scoring and is sixth in the big sky, averaging 16.5 points. He's also seventh in field goal percentage. He spent his first two seasons actually at Utah State in 2016 through 2018 and was the freshman of the year in the Mountain West. He then went on to play two seasons at Marquette before transferring back to Weber State's for his senior season. For more on tonight's game and a chance to get to know one of our players better, Jason had a chance to speak with Trey Stewart. The freshman guard from American Fork, Utah and American Fork High School made his collegiate debut against Oregon earlier this season. Here's the interview with Trey. 
You guys haven't played in a week, but it's not like you guys have been doing nothing besides practicing. This is a finals week. How's finals week going for you? Uh, you know, just test, test, and studying, and then you come here and you have to lift a bunch, and then you go and study some more. So it's been good. People have been getting their work done, so we're just trying to survive, man. How are finals going for you, do you think? Uh, they're good. I got one more left. I took one this morning. And the tr- most tragic thing happened yesterday is I woke up, I studied for an hour, pre- like prepared for my test, logged on, and it didn't open till tomorrow. So I had to wait. So I was like, come on. All that prep for nothing. All that prep for nothing, man. I tell you. I tell you. So you said you have one more to go. What's the last one you have? Science wellness. Easy class. So if you ever go to BYU, take that class. It's an online one. It's nice. What are you studying? What's, what's the goal for you here uh, in terms? To your studies uh sports psychology is my main get thing buckets. so i've been yeah that is true buckets. get buckets is another thing <laughs> alex studies buckets i haven't seen him in a class <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> no but yeah i just want to be a psychologist so that's kind of what i've been going into right now take me through what the season's been like for you i, I was talking with hunter uh last week uh, and talking to him about you know just being ready when your number is called and obviously he's a couple years ahead of you in terms of being in the program yeah. but how are you staying ready you played in two games so far this year what does staying ready mean for you right now honestly like the practices are set up like you see how high intensity it is like it's set up for you to get better every day like you just got to come bring your a game and just work your hardest so if you do that and just focus on the now then you'll get better and then you'll be ready for that moment so like when my name gets called i feel like i'll be comfortable because i've been playing against alex and Tijon every day which is tough to guard but yeah just just every day every day what was that moment like for you when you did get your first minutes on the floor as a BYU Cougar um it was it was cool because like my high school teammate was on Oregon Mm -hmm. so it was fun to be on the court with him and then I don't know I I felt pretty comfortable on there so I don't know it was just cool to be on the Trailblazer Stadium cool to be playing Oregon and take them down so and you got your first bucket in that game too I did get my first bucket and I I got called one dribble pull up for the past (laughs) month and they're like hey every time you come in that's all you get and I was like okay I'll take it one dribble pull up how would you describe your game What, what do you feel is the strength that you bring when you're on the floor uh defense defense right now Trey you want to test him <laughs> no yeah just my main thing is I just try to lock people up and try to cause a little havoc on defense because offensively I'm I need to develop my game a lot more and that's why it's nice to learn from these guys but yeah energy and defense you've obviously seen how well this team has played to start the year how much of what we're seeing now on the floor how much did you and the rest of the guys see in the offseason leading into this year like yeah that we, we could be really good here I think Pope always told us, like, he's like, you you can be really good. But he always made sure, like, it's like you can be good. Like, we're not there yet. We had the potential to be. So, like, when we went on the court and we were balling out, like, it was just kind of a given. Like, we were all pretty confident that we were going to do good. Um, And we have as much confidence that we're going to continue to get better. So, I'm going to assume that most people know who your dad is. But for those that don't, your dad is Ray. He's assistant coach on the women's team. I'm curious what it's been like to be here at BYU with your dad? Uh, most people say it's like a it's like a friend relationship. Like they couldn't tell it was my dad. Because like I'll come up to him, I'll dap him up, but we keep it pretty brief here. You know, we're both kind of in our own personal realms working our thing. And I don't know, I, I like that relationship where like we go home and we can talk about everything, but when we're here right now, it's just kind of business. Well, and both teams are playing really, really well. They've only lost one game. I know, they've been playing incredible. That was the girls team, man, I'm telling you. Before we wrap things up, I want to ask you your journey here to BYU because correct me if I'm wrong so you originally committed to Pope at UVU yeah. then you went on your mission uh, it was during the mission that you found out that it was before oh, it was right before yeah. so so tell us the journey here so I committed like before basketball season October ish and then October November and then Pope after my high school season changed to BYU this is like May April and then I signed over with him and then left on my mission so it was nice because it would have been really stressful to be gone and have that happen but it all worked out what was that whole process like committing to one school and then ultimately ending up at another all in you know a fairly short period of time it was a little stressful because like he signed like a it was like six eight year extension at UVU so I was like oh we're good like I'll come home and everything will be set up and then he left and I was like come on now and I didn't know if he would bring me over or not but thankfully he did 
did, and I'm just, I was grateful for the opportunity. All right, last thing. Weber State, it's another in-state team. You Growing up here, you know what these in-state games are like. Yeah. What are you anticipating from uh, a trip up to Ogden? Uh, just they're aggressive. They have great players, so we're just kind of anticipating defense, like catching the move, being like getting back on transition because they've had some nice highlights that we've seen. Like you're saying, in-state, you see a lot of their highlights. You see the big plays, and we're just going to try to limit those. We don't want any of those on us. So, Trey, great stuff. Thank you so much, and uh, good luck against the Wildcats. Hey, appreciate you, man. You have a good one. Coming up next, we'll head to the D Event Center for a courtside conversation with Mark Durant. Cougar pregame live continues in a moment on the new skin BYU Sports Network. Here's your host, Landon Southwick, with more Cougar pregame live on the new skin BYU Sports Network. Welcome back to Cougar Pregame Live, presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. We're getting you ready for the Cougars and the Weber State Wildcats up in Ogden. Fans, remember when the Cougars win, you win with Papa John's Pizza. With a BYU win today, pizza will be 50% off at papajohns.com using the online promo code BYU50 Monday. This offer is good at any Utah location. Let's check around, check out some scores around the country and some top 25 scores, including Gonzaga getting the 69-55 victory over Texas Tech at the Jerry Colangelo Classic as they got a nice victory today. Duke also winners 87-56 over Elon. USC, 10th ranked USC, 67-53 over Georgia Tech. Xavier was also victors 80-71 over Marquette's. A couple games headed into action this evening, but also of note, Arizona and Cal Baptist in action 31-30 and Kentucky over North Carolina 40-29 at the half in the CBS Sports Classic. A couple of games happening this evening, including Tennessee at Memphis. Excuse me, that one was canceled. A couple of games were canceled in the top 25. Baylor still waiting to happen, and that game will be on ESPN2 as Baylor will take on Oregon and try to keep their 9-0 streak alive. Local action as well. Utah fell to Missouri 83-75. Jazz are in action tonight. And as you saw, the Cougars fell in football 31-28. And the Cougars are going to have their hands full tonight against the Wildcats. And a lot going on at the D event center, including a whiteout tonight for fans up there in Ogden. The Purple Palace trying to pack the house up there, giving away t-shirts to the first 4,000-ish fans there. So we'll have to keep an eye on what the numbers look like there, but a tough place to play. And we talked about it in the first segment. The Cougars are 10-11 and 11 in Ogden. And, and we'll talk with Mark here coming up about what that reason could be. What is it that makes it so difficult to play up there in Ogden, albeit... Mark Pope's side has fared really well against the Wildcats with the last victory in the series coming in 2020 between the two sides. But we'll uh, see if we can get this uh, connection put up. I know Mark Durant had struggles getting to the last game. Now we're struggling to connect to him. So I don't know what technical difficulties are continuing to rise. I know Greg took the weather with him to Shreveport, Louisiana, Mark, hopefully we can get some connection with you down there and we can have a conversation and it's not going to be about trains, planes, and automobiles, but it might be about uh, Internet 3.0 and NFTs or something along those lines. Um, But uh, like I mentioned, a number of games going on and we'll try to keep you apprised of what's happening around the West Coast Conference as well as in the top 25s. The Cougars fell out of the top 25 this week. They were coming in at 24 Uh, before the loss to Creighton, and now we're just receiving votes. So still technically kind of right along those lines and ready to be there, but not quite in to the situation where they need to be. Let's take another quick timeout, and then we'll be back and try to have our conversation with Mark Durant. You're listening to Cougar Pregame Live on the new skin, BYU Sports Network.
Let's get you back to Cougar Pregame Live with your host, Landon Southwick. Welcome back to Cougar Pregame Live, presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BUIU Athletics. It's time for our courtside conversation with Mark Durant. Mark, do I do we have you there this time? Are you in Ogden at this point? <laughs> I, I made it to Ogden, Whew. and uh, if you can hear me, we're in good shape because I'm, I'm ready to go. I, I can hear you, and the fans can hear you, and that's a good thing, and we're just glad you're there this time. No planes, trains, automobiles. You're in Ogden. It was heartbreaking to not make it to South Dakota last week. I felt like I abandoned my good friend Greg Rubel. After watching the game, I have to admit I was a little bit happy that I wasn't there because <laughs> that was a pretty ugly game for BYU. But uh, I'm, I'm glad to be back in this building. I love this arena. I've got a lot of great memories, high school memories playing here. Obviously, calling games. This is one of the gems in the state, in my opinion. It's a beautiful arena and uh, looks as new as it, the day it was built. And there's been some really good basketball played in this building. So I'm ready to go. This Weber State team is you know, very good. They've kind of smacked headfirst into reality when they played a couple good teams here recently. But never count out uh, Randy and his his guys. I mean, I've seen too many uh, head scratchers in this building to ever take Weber State for granted. You can't take Weber State for granted, especially at the Purple Palace with all that's happening there. Mark, let's let's jump in and talk a, a little bit about what Coach Pope has talked about. He talked about the team needed to be a little bit more patiently aggressive. What does that mean for this side? He, he said they were kind of overly aggressive and not patient with it all against Creighton. What does that mean for this side, and how do they need to apply that tonight? Well, the team right now is a little bit like I was in junior high, just having an identity crisis, right? <laughs> Didn't know who I was or what I wanted to be. And that's a shame because early in the season, I thought they'd really established a nice identity with rebounding and defense and Obviously, things happen. You lose guys, and, and you have to, to have to change. But with that change, you know, there's going to be problems. Sometimes you will be too aggressive. Sometimes you won't be aggressive enough. You're trying to find that balance now. You have to play a little bit smaller. You don't have the rim protectors behind you, so you can't afford to be too aggressive uh, defensively because you're going to get beat to the rim, and you don't have that, 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 that rotation and those rim protectors back there. And uh, you, you face a, a seven-footer uh, like Creighton had, and, he can t totally dominate you because you don't have anyone that you can really throw at that. And you know, obviously Creighton's a very good team. They proved it with what they did against Villanova uh, yesterday. And, and and so, I mean, there's there's not – it's not the end of the world, but the, the point is that BYU is trying to kind of find what team that they are going to be at this point. And they're going to have to obviously play a little bit smaller. Um and do some things differently, well, but that transition is not going to be pretty at times, and I think that's what we saw at, at Creighton. And definitely had their challenges at Creighton. As we talk about the injuries that have wreaked havoc on the side, who really needs to step up on this team besides A.B.? Obviously, A.B. has continued to, to, to do what he can, and we may have lost connection, so we'll, we'll chat for a second. But this, this side has gone through those injuries, and Mark was just talking about the challenge that we had with heights. And Brandon, I, I, you got me, brother. I got you back, man. Appreciate you being here. I know we're we're struggling with a connection here, back and forth. The Purple Palace obviously has some challenging connections up there next to the mountains and and the beautiful arena that it is. But when we get a chance to ask you this question, Mark, the the question that I'm going to ask is what players need to step up besides AB. And the, and the challenge is this side has had the injuries and lost. Uh, I, you know, when we talk about the Baxter injury and the loss there that challenged this side they were playing well early on in the season and to lose a key player like him and lose another couple key players in this starting lineup and it really was the height that this team lost and and you mentioned it Creighton with a seven footer that became a challenge who needed to step up and it's a lot of freshmen that have the heights and you know when you bring in a freshman into a game early on sometimes the challenge there is can they handle it? What can they do? What's going to happen? And, and I think those are our challenges because I think we've got Mark back. And yeah, I'm back. I don't know how long you got me, Landon, but I'm back. We'll try. We'll take all the knowledge we can get. Mark, my, my question is, who needs to step up besides A.B.? Oh, man. Who doesn't? I think a guy that can uh, is Seneca Knight. I think we haven't really tapped into his potential as a scorer. I think he's 
You know, he can he can do more and is getting more confident and will do more. I think Atiki Ali Atiki is a guy that this is as bad as the injuries are to, to guys. I mean, if you're the guy next up, that's a great opportunity, and this is a great chance for him. He's problem is he's a little bit raw, and you're talking about things like running the offense and the rotations. He's not as familiar with that as other guys, so that, that's going to be a problem. But this is a real chance for Atiki Ali Atiki to, to play. I think he's going to start this game. So people can kind of play the, the positions they had been playing. Caleb would go to the four, and and, and so he, he ha, he'll have a great opportunity. Uh, I, I think uh, you know Lucas can continue to, to, to get better. He he was so good, struggled at, at Creighton a little bit. Um, obviously, Caleb Lohner is the real guy that you hope can kind of right the ship as good he, as he does in so many areas. His offense has struggled. He looks doesn't look confident uh, when he makes his offensive moves. You know, he was the guy coming in along, obviously, Alex Barcel is there, but he was the guy you think he's going to be a 15 and 10 guy yeah. for you, and that's just kind of be the baseline for him, and he's, you know, really struggling offensively. So if he could right the ship, that would probably help the team the most, and certainly we've seen in the past that he's capable of it. So I'm not asking guys to do things, Landon, that, that they haven't never done before. I'm just ask, asking for guys to do the things they've already done and maybe do that just a little bit better than what they've done in the past. And, and you've got several of those guys on this team for BYU, and they're going to need all of them. I mean, it, it's a whole different uh, a whole different road show right now. You, yeah. you you got to have to guys have step up or it's going to be a real struggle and a grind. I mean, you, I hate to bring it up, <laughs> bring up football here. After, it's still pretty sore after that loss today, but – you know, if, if if you lose a couple key players on defense, let's say, and, you know, guys need to step up, and it's, sometimes it's just about trying to survive, and, and the offense will need to pick it up, and guys like Seneca and Caleb will need to score more points because the defense you had before is not the same defense you have now, and it's going to be a little bit of a struggle. So other guys need to step up and start playing some good basketball, or it's going to be a long, uh, a long season for BYU. Mark, my final question for you. The Cougars are 10 and 11 in Ogden. They've They've lost 10 of 21 in Ogden. Why has the D event center been such a difficult to place to play for the Cougars? I don't know that it's so much a difficult place to play as you're playing against the difficult teams and difficult coaches. I, 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 I'm happy to go to the pit and play New Mexico as long as they don't have a good team or a good coach. <laughs> and it's not a problem. But it's, it's the problem is they've had good coaches and good teams and Randy's a tremendous coach, and you've had some really terrific players come through. Obviously, Damian Lillard was amazing here, but you had a lot of guys like that over the years that, uh, you know, look forward to this game and have played well, and they're comfortable in this building. So, like I said, you better be ready to go against the Wildcats because they're a confident team and they're a good team. Don't let the, the last couple of games for them fool you. They're a really good basketball team, and they're chomping at the bit to get after BYU today. Well, Mark, we appreciate it. Have a good call, and we'll, we'll catch you here soon. Hey, great job, Landon. Sorry. We're throwing you in the deep end, man, with all these issues. You hey. handled it like a champ. Hey, we're having fun. Well, I'm excited <laughs> to listen to you guys and, and have a good call up there. Hey, thanks, Landon. See you. Stop by your local Big O Tires for no credit needed financing and the lowest price on every tire. Every day, Big O Tires, the team you trust. Coming up next, we'll send you to the D Event Center for the Cougar pregame coaches show with Jason Shepard. You're listening to BYU Basketball on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. It's time to get the inside scoop on today's game. This is the Cougar Pregame Coaches Show, brought to you by Zions Bank. For a financial slam dunk, Zions Bank is for you. Also brought to you by Big O Tires. Your local Big O Tires has financing available. Big O Tires, the team you trust. Now let's head back to the Built Bar courtside seats and join your host, Jason Shepard. Good evening, BYU basketball fans, and welcome into the D Events Center in Ogden, Utah. Tonight, the 8 and 2 Cougars face the 9 and 2 Wildcats. My name is Jason Shepard, filling in for Greg Rubel. I'm joined by my broadcast partner, former BYU basketball standout Mark Durant. And BYU, as Mark waves to nobody who is paying attention, but that's fine. <laughs> 
<laughs> BYU hasn't played since last Saturday, a game that with the exception of the first 15 seconds, BYU did not lead. The loss to Creighton in South Dakota dropped the Cougars out of the top 25. Weber State has dropped two out of their last three games and are coming off a loss here on Wednesday night to Utah State. Now that loss snapped the Wildcats' 15-game home winning streak. Mark, both of these teams will certainly be motivated tonight for more reasons than just the fact that it's an in state matchup yeah that always adds another level to it but this BYU team I think uh, Jason is at a critical time in the season for them I mean they've had the injuries we've talked a lot about that they had established themselves early as a as a really strong defensive team teams were struggling to get over 50 60 points a game against BYU they were a tremendous rebounding team just dominating the boards and they developed this identity that that's who we are we don't need to score a lot of points because we have the defense we have the rebounding and and now that's kind of all changed and so they've lost that identity they're trying to find what they're going to be now they're going to have to be more offensive they're going to have to give up some of that defense and rebounding to be competitive but the question is can they score enough points to, to make up for the lack of defense and rebounding that they've lost. And so guys are going to really have to step up, and then you add in the in-state game. This is a big, big game. We had a big one at Missouri, yep. uh, Missouri State, and, and they came through. And this is another one of those games to show what this team's made of. Coming up next, my pregame conversation with the head coach of the Cougars, Mark Pope, as the Science Bank Cougar Pregame Coaches Show continues on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. You're tuned to the Cougar Pregame Coaches Show. For more with head coach Mark Pope, let's rejoin your host, Jason Shepard. It should be a good night for the Cougars, and that brings us to my pregame chat with Coach Pope, and it's brought to you by Zions Bank. For a financial slam dunk, Zions Bank is for you. Coach, normally you have a week off. It's probably a good thing, get everybody ready, but we have finals as well. How do you think the guys have handled a week off with finals coming off the loss? Yeah, I think our guys have been good. We have a mature group, and they work really hard, and and uh, they stay pretty focused together, and uh, guys have been trying to hold each other accountable. So I think it's been a good week. Uh, definitely guys got a little bit of rest, and uh, if not mentally, at least physically, <laughs> and and uh, so we, we got a massive challenge ahead of us, and I hope we're ready. What has been the focus this week heading into the Wildcat game? Well, Weber State uh, is a really, really good team. I mean, they were 9-0, and and there's only a handful of teams in the country that actually did that this year. And um, they're, they're, they play small. They're super quick. They uh, run like crazy in transition. Almost 30% of their possessions are transition possessions, which is a really, really high number. Uh, they play a ton of four out. All their guys can make plays. They have some really lethal scorers, um, and they're actually one of the one of the, uh, you know top fifty uh, tur- forcing turnovers team, steals and turnovers team in the country. So, um, it, it, you know they're a great team. They're a veteran team. Uh, they've been together for a while. We're really well coached. So it's a big challenge. It seems like a, a broken record every time we talk. Uh, BYU's facing a guy that's a double double guy. Talking about <laughs> Dylan Jones, he's the freshman uh, of the year in the Big Sky, and he's second in the nation in defensive rebounds. It, it seems like a broken record. Yeah, he's a terrific player, and he's really really skilled he's interesting because he's not he's not really doing a ton of damage from beyond the three-point line but he's doing damage in every other sense of the game he's a really really physical really really skilled uh, ball handler playmaker passer uh, gets to the free throw line um, and then defensively he's just got a, a, a terrific terrific offensive and defensive IQ he's got an unbelievable feel for the game so he's He's a challenge for everybody that's going to face them. You've had the same starting five for the last couple of games. Are you going to make any tweaks tonight? Yeah, we're going to change it up. Uh, we'll do, uh, we're going to start a tiki at the five, which will be um, you know, a, a, a baptism by fire for him and, and uh, see if we can steal a couple minutes from him early in the game. He's been playing hard and practicing well, and he's, he's growing really, really fast. And um, So it'll give us a little more size just to start this game. Beyond the size, does it also help to maybe get some guys back to natural positions as well? Yep, it shifts, it shifts our lineup down. Um, you know, it, it, it potentially uh, makes us a more physical, um, protect the rim, uh, you know, guard with length, um, uh, be aggressive on both sides of glass, potentially, potentially helps us there. And then Seneca to the bench to be able to come off the bench, is that the idea? Yep, and Seneca will come off the bench quick. He's... Um, you know, he's playing better and better and finding more and more of a role, so he'll, we expect him to be terrific tonight. Coach, thanks for the time. We'll talk to you afterwards. Okay, thank you. 
All right, that's BYU head coach Mark Pope. Now it's time for tonight's keys to the game, brought to you by Ford. Built Ford Proud. Mark Durant, what are your keys to tonight's game? Well, looking at the stats for these teams, that uh, Weber State has more turnovers than they do assists. BYU has more assists than turnovers. Weber State's prone to turn the ball over. I think if BYU can keep that trend going with more turnovers for the Wildcats than they have assists, BYU will win this game. Smith's has all your fresh game day grilling and tailgating faves. And when you shop today, you can get free pickup on orders of $35 or more. Just order from the app or at Kroger.com and make your game day great. Smith's fresh for everyone. The BYU Store Cooper Cinema Show is coming up next. It's almost time to hit the hardwood. This is the Cougar Tip-Off Show, brought to you by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Also brought to you by the BYU Creamery, the classic BYU tradition. Have a scoop today. Also by Siegfried and Jensen. Siegfried and Jensen has been helping Utah families for over 30 years. Now let's head live to the Built Bar courtside seats and join Mark Durant alongside Jason Shepard. Welcome back to the D Event Center in Ogden, Utah. Weber State and the BYU Cougars. This is the Cougar Tip-Off Show brought to you by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Jason Shepard and Mark Durant with you courtside. Weber State has had a nightmare of a time trying to beat BYU in Provo. The Cougars 21-0 all-time against the Wildcats at home. However, in Ogden, things have been much different. And I know you and Landon, Mark, were talking about this. BYU is 10-11 and 11 against Weber State at the D Event Center. Why do you think where the game is played has mattered so much in terms of the outcome? Well, I think a little bit is that Weber State has a hard time getting uh, the kind of caliber of athlete that you need to have to, to win on the road, uh, obviously with the noted exception of Damian Lillard. Uh, but he was when, good. He was, he was probably a good enough athlete. But when you're here in this building and you get it going and the crowd's going, the kind of guys that otherwise might not hurt you can really play well. And uh, obviously it's a big game for Weber State. They come after BYU and they're this is a confident team. I think they've won a lot of games already this year, even though they've lost a couple big ones lately. I think it's a team that leaves it and win, so they just need their reinforcement. They can get off a good start with this crowd behind them. It could be a little of those games. Mouth-watering Hawaiian-style food is minutes away from the Marriott Center. Fresh off the grill chicken, teriyaki steak, and sizzling shrimp, Coconut Island Grill has the island flavors your mouth has been waiting for. Text COCONUT to 61090 for a 15% discount on your next visit. That's COCONUT with two Ks. Text K-O-K-O-N-U-T to 61090. Coming up after the break, my conversation with Wildcat head coach Randy Ray. This is the BYU Store Cougar Tip-Off Show on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. This is the Cougar Tip-Off Show. Let's head back live courtside and join Jason Shepard. The 9-2 Wildcats are led by senior Kobe McEwen with 17 points per game. McEwen came to Weber this season after stops at Marquette and Utah State previously, so he's certainly aware of the surroundings around here. Then from the senior to the freshman, Dylan Jones is the reigning Big Sky Freshman of the Year. Jones averages a double-double with 13 points and 10 rebounds. He is second best in the country in defensive rebounding, so surprise, surprise, rebounding once again will play a role in tonight's outcome. Jason, this is the fourth team that BYU has <laughs> faced a double-double guy. It's, That's it's, unheard of. It's comical that, that we're literally, and I even <laughs> joked with Coach Pope that if, it sounds like a broken record when I'm asking you about these double-double guys and one of the best rebounders in the country. I've literally so asked him rare. every time. I mean, that is so rare and to have four in such a short period of time. Wow. Leading the way for Weber State is longtime head coach Randy Ray, who's in his 16th season at the helm of the Wildcat basketball program. I caught up with him earlier to preview tonight's matchup and asked him how 9-2 sits with him. 
Uh, actually good overall. We had a tough, uh, we've had a tough schedule. You know, we, we started off playing at Duquesne. We went to a, a really good tournament in Florida and played pretty well down there and won all those games. And then, uh, you know, I had to go down to Dixie, had a couple league games. So probably a little bit ahead of maybe where we thought we might be a little bit overall. Uh, I knew we had a pretty nice team. Didn't know it would come together, how quickly it would come together, but, uh, but it came together fairly quickly. And, uh, you know, we didn't we didn't play particularly well against Utah State, although they had a lot to do with that. But overall, we got a lot of room for improvement. We, we got a fairly high ceiling, and we just got to keep working to get better. Well, and and you mentioned there's always room for improvement. The the two losses have been recent. I mean, two out of the last three have been the losses. What's been the biggest difference as of late versus the way the season started for you? The teams were playing. <laughs> You know, we played Washington State, and and they got a really good basketball team. They're going to be a top four or five team in the Pac-12. And, you know, we hung around there for a long time. It got away from us at the end, but it was more of a, you know, eight to ten point game coming down the stretch. And then Utah State. You know, they got a really good basketball team. I think they're an NCAA tournament team. I really do. And we didn't defend them very well. But both those teams, I think, are going to be NCAA tournament teams. So, you know, we lost the games, but uh, we can take a lot out of it to help us get better. Let's talk about your team a little bit more. Uh, you got a lot of talent. you got the young player in Dylan. You've got the vet in in McEwen. And there are a lot of guys that really stand out as as a big reason why you guys have had the success that that you've had. What pleases you most about what you see from the team right now? You know, we have uh, some new starters this year and that type of thing. We added a few new guys. And I always want to know, you know, try to figure out what our identity is going to be. And up here, since I've been here, it's always been about defense and being tough and being really together. And and these guys have really bought into that. They they, they bought into the culture of how we do things and they buy into trying to be as good as we can defensively. We got good team toughness and, and the guys are really together. So that's what I like about this team. Now that we know who we are, now we can just continue to build and grow. And the guys uh, share the ball. They move the ball well. They, they, play well together. They're very, very unselfish and uh, they're a fun group to be around and they want to be good. They really want to be good. They work hard at it and uh, they work hard every day. In-state games, regardless of record, regardless of the teams, they're always just a little bit different. What are your thoughts on this BYU team and then the fact that you get them at home? Well, I like that we get them at home, but this is another really good basketball team, obviously. Very talented. You know, it all starts with uh, Barcelo. You know, he's outstanding. He's terrific. He's one of the best guards in the country. And then uh, they, they always have guys that they kind of fit everything fits for him you know they got their big guys Caleb Lohner I love how he plays he's tough competitive great rebounder they got the shooter in Nell you know they got uh, Spencer Johnson's been playing really well for him off the bench and uh, I, I just really and the, the Lucas kid has been a great addition he really knows how to play the game. So their pieces always fit. They always do every year. They play really well together. They run their offense with great pace, great unselfishness. And they're always a really, really uh, elite defensive team. And that hasn't changed this year. They're very good defensively. So it's just uh, another year, different team, but kind of the same t- kind of team, you know. They And Coach Pope does a great job coaching them. What kind of atmosphere do you expect at the D Event Center? Should be pretty good. Yeah, I think it should be pretty good. I think, you know, we had a good crowd for Utah State. And I think uh, when you play in-state games, everybody gets a little more excited, a little more juice, a little more intensity. And it's fun. You know, they're fun games, you know, and uh, the fans love them. The players love them. Everybody loves them. And I think we'll, uh, I think we'll have a good crowd. I think uh, people will show up for this one. Coach, thank you so much for the time. Really do appreciate it. Thank you very much. Yep. Thanks for having me. All right. That's Weber State head coach Randy Ray. Appreciate his time today. More of the BYU Store Cougar Tip-Off show coming your way next on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Welcome back to the Cougar Tip-Off Show. Let's rejoin Jason Shepard. Getting closer to tip-off here in Ogden between BYU and Weber State. In 2022, BYU men's basketball will be dunking on cancer through generous donations. Each BYU dunk during WCC play will raise money for BYU Simmons Center for Cancer Research. For more information on the Cougs' fight against cancer, go to sccr at chem.byu.edu. One more break. We'll wrap up the BYU Store Cougar Tip-Off Show next on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. The Cougar Tip-Off Show rolls on. Let's head back live courtside. 
Welcome back courtside here at the D Event Center in Ogden. BYU and Weber State. We're going to take another quick timeout. We're going to try and sync up with the football broadcast. Cougar post game for football is wrapping up. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we'll all be together on all the channels. How about that? Back after this on the new skin, BYU Sports Network.